Good morning from our apartment in Bosnia, in Mostar. So I thought I'd give you a little tour of the apartment we're staying in. It's uh, 19 pounds a night, which is very reasonable. Um, I'll put the conversions for that down below. So um, what does 19 pounds get you in Bosnia? Well, first and foremost, let's have a little look outside. I know how to open a door. So, got this uh, little terraced area, and uh, it's going to be a rainy day today, I feel, but uh, yeah, you've got this nice little view off into the distance of uh, these mountains, and you've also got a uh, a bitter orange tree, which uh, bitter orange is actually quite popular in uh, in this region, from what I've learned. You can get them uh, get them quite easily because uh, they're very popular. So inside, what do we have inside? So you've got hallway, all your mod gardens, so it's hang your coat up and stuff. And I've got a bedroom here, and in here I've got a double bed. Basically, just consists of two single beds that have been pushed into one and made into a double. You've got another single here, and you've got you know a little place to store stuff and extra blankets and stuff. And you've got cupboard space here. Um, we're going to be lugging those around all day today because it's our last day in Mostar. And then the windows here are pretty cool, so you can kind of open them that way, or kind of you can close it like that, put it to the side, and <laughs> I can't demonstrate. There we go, and you can open it like that. So uh, when we got here, it was opened. You kind of pull it up and then pull it out like that. <laughs> okay. Let's try that again. There we go. So yeah, that's how we found them. So that's how we will leave them. And uh, through here, you've got a bathroom. I must admit, this bathroom was a struggle for me. So you've got a little uh, washing machine here. We've, that's been very useful for us because uh, we don't pack many clothes on our trips. We just pack the bare essentials. We're actually going to be traveling lighter in future. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Got ourselves some personal, so we're going to leave that for the next people because we can't take that around with us. Because we're getting on our plane tomorrow. A little toilet. If you see here, look, it's very, very against the wall. So imagine you sit in there and you're trying to get comfortable. Um, quite a challenge, but we, we made it work. <laughs> the shower, yeah, did perfectly fine and somewhere to air out the room and uh hello <laughs> so then we've got the the living quarters the uh the queen's the queen's quarters <laughs> you gonna say hello i'm so sort of surprised we didn't get flipped off oh no what's happened here any brought it yesterday oh dear gotta buy another one it was only cheap wasn't it um, so, yeah, you got your, your fridge, your cooker, you even came with like oils and stuff like that. We didn't, we just et out most days, it's that, so cheap in Bosnia. Your sink, and you got a little view of the mountains just over there from the window. Aircon, which is vital in the summer months, but we're here in October, so it's not been that bad. And yeah, somewhere to sit on the table, have our coffee and stuff in the morning. And uh, we get this place a good hoover, so you've got a hoover there. And you've got some really nice decor as well. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, I think it adds to the character of an of a apartment personally. But yeah, 19 for all that. That was the apartment tour 
in most are. One cool thing I noticed as well coming in yeah, the other day was that there's actually pomegranate trees growing around here. Just they're uh, wild pomegranate trees. I think they're pomegranates. <laughs> I had one, I had a pomeg pomegranate drink the other day. So uh, it looked like pomegranates. But um, yeah, so what do we think of the apartment? Well, tell you what man, for 19 quid. It was like home from home. It was like a home from home. Yeah. Very cozy. Uh, just what you needed after a long day of walking. It really was. Uh, you know, we've done a lot of walking on this holiday. My feet are so blistered, honestly. They really are. I think I need to get better shoes or better okay. fitting shoes. Yeah, Tammy's, <laughs> we've walked so much, Tammy's got holes in her shoes from all the friction. <laughs> and uh, my shoes, I think, I think they're just a bit too big for me. So I'm gonna get my feet properly sized and measured when we're back in the UK. But uh, here's a, a better look at this little, I can't go in there because uh, you shouldn't go inside abandoned buildings in Bosnia because uh, there is always a chance that there could be an unexploded IED device oh, well D is device isn't it <laughs> IED in there so uh, yeah don't go into abandoned buildings I saw a YouTuber do that when I was researching Mostar and I was like what are you doing <laughs> you fool you're gonna you're gonna kill yourself you know if not for the health and safety you could potentially be throwing yourself in danger for a YouTube video and we prioritise safety on the team of Graf Channel can't really, can't really see in there but uh, yeah so I think I may have mentioned in my last video but we're staying in the home of the Ultras uh, as you can see here now I believe there's two different teams. So there's Mostar or Velez Mostar, and there is, um, I think it's called Zrinski. Zrinski Mostar. Just here, look. I don't know what that means, but it's uh, it's quite a quite a fan fanatically ooh, bloody hell, quite a fanatically supported team. Got to be careful walking on this thing. That's what it says, if anyone can translate that for me. My uh, Bosnian is not up to scratch. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of references to the Ultras in uh, graffiti around the area. Or the Red Army. Well, the Red Army. So the Red Army is uh, Velez. And I don't know the nickname for uh, uh, Zradinsky. I do hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Bloody hell, <laughs> the car made me jump. But yeah, you've got a lot of uh, a lot of wear and tear in this area from from the war, as you can see. Um, so you're probably thinking, oh, you know, you must have got there and been really disappointed in your area. Nope, definitely not. We love it. Yeah, completely opposite. We don't want to be in the centre with every, everything and everybody else. You want to be out here with, you know, living with the locals. And it's quite cool, really, because we have this like we had this little mini mart back there, and we were shopping with the locals and mingling with a few of them because uh, I have a limited knowledge of uh, of Bosnian, the Bosnian language. I've been studying it, and yeah, it's, it kind of it gives you that more authentic feel because uh you know really in reality you know you go to the old town and you stay there all day you're not really gonna get a realistic perspective of uh of how of how life works in this in this you know in this place but yeah you can see the buildings are uh you know very old and they've been damaged and uh yeah, you know, it's it's interesting to see remnants of the of the history right in front of your very eyes, you know, and uh, interesting to see what happens. Double useful. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, it's indeed a very very beautiful country, Bosnia, but obviously it's uh, it's it's seen its share of violence and 
it's seen its share of struggles. Um, and I think that's the side which isn't often uh, often conveyed in a YouTube video. You know, the YouTube videos mostly, there are a few outliers, but mostly, if you just go type in Mostar um, into YouTube or, you know, unless it's like a, a travel documentary or something or a history documentary, if you know, if you typed in like Mostar vlog, it's going to be the same thing really, just people drinking Bosnian coffee, which we did obviously, but, you know, drinking Bosnian coffee in a fancy restaurant and staying in that one place. But unfortunately, that's not how life actually is for the locals. And uh, when we go to a different country, we do like to live like the locals as best as we can. So, you know, one of my mates, he just gets Ubers everywhere when he's abroad. Whereas we will travel on the public transport systems. Uh, that kind of its drawbacks. So in Kos, we, we did a, uh, I think four day stint in Kos with the family and the kids and stuff. And uh, transport there was very, very bad. <laughs> so the buses ran, from what I recall, it was eight in the morning, 12 p.m. 4 p.m. 7 p.m. that was it and the ones coming back into the village that we were staying in was even less regular so there was that and uh, yeah we uh, couldn't use in that occasion the public transport so from what I've learned in Bosnia you just cross the road on these bits you just literally have to cross it but yeah there you go look so there's the Ultras pub. As you can see, it's been uh, been damaged. Windows have been shattered in, maybe by a rival gang. But then, right across the street, you've got this beautiful old building. It's like almost an Ottoman style building. And then, you know, some lovely palm trees and stuff. And, and then a mural up there. So it's really strange in Bosnia, as I say, like this is what I I really wanted to document is like the, the stark contrasts between the two different uh, two different places or two different types of places, sorry, in Bosnia. You've got the touristy areas, which is obviously the majority of what you'll see on YouTube because uh, heaven forbid you paint a place or a city in its true colour and show people the realities. Um, and then you've got um, the uh, the more kind of you know the, the residential areas that are kind of in, in good condition um, and then you've got the residential areas which have you know got signs of the uh, of the war that happened uh, in the early 90s so uh, quite a uh, quite a contrast and I've said that a few times in this series or this Bosnian video series but it is a massive contrast and uh, I do stand by that view and you know the cool thing was that we came to Bosnia with no expectations and no real knowledge of what had happened the stuff we've learned really has been through like manuals pamphlets you know there's a little museum you can have a little look around so we try to learn what we can but we try to remain objective because um, you know obviously uh, we live in a completely different world but I think uh, showing the world as it is is quite important too but then you know the interesting thing about this particular walk is just how quickly the area evolves so you've just seen back there broken down buildings shattered houses uh, you know damage and then you start to walk into the area you start to see more of this kind of stuff so streams. You can't get over clear as water, is there? The water is very, very clear as well. I'll tell you what, Bosnian drinking water is very nice. Uh, it's meant to be um, purer than like, the bottle of the Some of the I freshest think. water you can get, yeah. yeah. You know, come because we're right in the mountains, aren't we really? We're nestled in the mountains and uh, you know, by being nestled in the mountains, you're gonna get the pure filtered water, I'd assume. Um, there was a time where we turned on the tap when we first arrived. And uh, the water was cloudy briefly, wasn't it? Yeah. We're like, oh no, what's going on? So we kind of left it in the cup for a, for a while. 
and within about a minute it had gone this crystal clear beautiful water and I was like I've never seen that before what's going on here did a bit of research and it turns out that uh, basically air bubbles because there was a lot of pressure in the water we turned on the tap kind of shot out the tap and uh, yeah it, uh, it obviously uh, had air bubbles in it that just needed to settle so that's what we let it do and once I'd done a bit of reading and I was relatively convinced that I was safe to drink drink the water I uh, chugged it back and it was to be honest some of the freshest water I've ever had in my life it was so beautiful it really was yeah look at this see what I mean like the areas you're stepping into like how quickly it all changes uh, look at this look zoom in there there you go these beautiful garden statues I believe that's a restaurant god forbid we won't go in there it's uh <laughs> even even at the prices being affordable we probably couldn't afford that place <laughs> so uh that's really that's that's really it man you, you'll notice like an evolution in the uh in the buildings and the uh and you know the kind of uh the, the architecture as you're walking but then the cool thing is or well, i wouldn't say the cool thing is but the interesting thing is that it will go right back to what it was a moment ago so we're walking through this beautiful area you know trees streams you know statues fountains and then you'll turn a corner and it will you know the building styles will change again to uh to more brutalist style architecture and that's something we noticed when we were staying in hungary actually so we were staying in uh, budapest in hungary and uh yeah one thing we noticed so we stayed in a place called the cheese i'm hoping i'm pronouncing that correctly but we stayed in a place called the cheese which is uh about an hour away from budapest or was it about 45 minutes away uh, 45 minutes half an hour away from budapest and uh where we stayed buildings were kind of pretty much like this like the brutalist you know straight edged buildings a bit of, a bit of graffiti on the side you know what i mean crumbling little shops but again for me that had true character that had the true character and was the uh was the real real way of living you know but that being said budapest for us was uh one of our least favorite cities believe it or not um i think we had paris syndrome i don't know if you're unfamiliar with paris syndrome it's basically where you go to a place and you expect it to be this beautiful incredible paradise and it doesn't live up to your individual expectations now don't get me wrong oh look another pomegranate tree look these are a bit more fresher i don't know if you can see them there you go look um doesn't live up to your individual expectations so we were told by hundreds of different people that we'd love budapest and it'd be our favorite city in the world and uh it just wasn't look at this look you've got this beautiful mural but then you can see some bullet shots in the mural itself crazy um so yeah paris syndrome is like uh, so a lot of people believe that paris is uh, a beautiful area because obviously it's the city of love and it's uh it's renowned for its architecture and of course that's very true um the city is uh the city is beautiful but there is also some very rundown and uh, dirty areas now i've not been to paris so i don't know if that's true you have to let me know in the comments if that's correct but i've met some residents of paris or Paris, who would agree that uh that's true but then i've also equally met people who have been to uh paris who think it is absolutely incredible you went to paris didn't you tam yeah. what did you think of it uh, did you get paris syndrome when i went it was beautiful bearing in mind i was about 13. right Beautiful when I went. Very beautiful. But now you get people are saying, oh, it's the most dirtiest country. But to me, I've got to find.
find out for myself. Oh yeah, definitely. So, if you go to the UK government website, they will tell you to not come to Bosnia if you're a UK citizen. Well, they would advise against it because currently there's a political party in Bosnia which is spouting anti-UK rhetoric. And be that it may, or as true as that may be, it's also not what we've experienced. Everyone's been really warm and kind to us. It's a nice little park. But when I spoke to you a moment ago about contrasts between areas, this is uh, what I mean. So you just saw back then the crumbling buildings, the destruction, the chaos that was left behind during the war. And then you have this beautiful park where people gather to have their morning bureks. If you've not tried burek, give it a go. And then you've got this stunning fountain over here. That, that water fountain. Water fountain at night was lovely. And then you've got the Bosnian and Croatian flags. They're not on mass currently because uh, it's currently, oh, bloody hell, there you go. Uh, you've got the Croatian and Bosnian flags up there. But I'd assume they're not on mass because it's uh, raining and uh, gonna be very windy today. But then, uh, yeah, walking a bit further down this street here, you'll see yet another evolution of uh, of the uh, of the place itself. And uh, second, sorry. Oh, is that? Ah, oh, right. Oh, I must have been pointing in a different direction. There you go. So there's the Bosnian flag. And uh, yeah, so you got buildings like this so when you think of Bosnia do you think of this kind of thing you know what do you think of you know in the comments what's uh what's your what's your opinions double neutral um you know for me everyone's been really friendly uh really welcoming um it's it's a really it's a very clean city as you can see look no no rubbish no no litter you know I'm not affiliated with the Bosnian tourist board but I think you can see with your own eyes that this is a beautiful country, yeah. you know, and you've got the mountainous backdrops, you know, and I'm, uh, I'm hoping that a few people will watch this and be like, you know what, okay, let's, rather than going to Spain on our next holiday or whatever, rather than going to Cancun or, you know, going to, uh, what else is popular with the tourists these days, Ibiza or whatever, come over to, come over to Croatia, come over to Bosnia, you know. You might see something you like you know and it makes a change it does it makes a big change and to be honest if you don't mind you know traveling a bit more rougher you could quite literally get a little uh, flight to split that cost each 80 quid i think it was no it's 160 quid in total 80 quid each and then we got a 18 pound well, it's about 20 quid each bus journey over to mostar basically well we went to Dubrovnik first but then yeah from Dubrovnik we went to uh here to Mostar so uh there you go look what's done it for me is actually being in the dip of the mountains because everywhere you look you've got mountains yeah you're surrounded by mountains that's what I mean this place is uh surrounded by mountains and uh you oh are. god I've uh <laughs> got to get away the music's uh, playing you are literally in the valley you are in a valley yeah and that's what I mean, it gets very, very hot in the... Uh, very hot and very wet. Very hot and very wet in the, <laughs> in the summer. Uh, well, sorry, very hot in the summer. And actually quite wet in the, uh, in the winter, but... Um, to be honest, it doesn't the, feel oh. like it's, an, it's October. It doesn't feel like it's October, no. It's still got that, that bite in the air, that humidity. Um, until we get back home, we'll feel it. We'll feel it when we get home. <laughs> yeah, loads of cats walking around everywhere. So if you're a cat lover... Well. There are dogs as well, yeah, there's a lot of dogs. Um, with cats you might get a nip off a cat but it's uh, if you get a nip off a dog and obviously it's a dog walking around on the streets then uh, you know a yeah. bit more riskier but we do love dogs we do love dogs but uh, yeah I mean if we saw someone petting a dog and it was friendly yeah we'd go up and give it a stroke actually we did the other day we was walking up this street it wasn't a stray dog it was a owner's dog I was walking up the street and this doggy came and uh, come to say hello to us and we striked it and we said uh, hello to the owner and uh, yeah it was a lovely dog I can't remember what it was was it like a husky or something yeah, yeah. yeah something like that there you go so walk down the street 
this beautiful, you know, kind of little area, and then bang, you see a building that, uh, that highlights what happened here. But it still has, in its own kind of strange, unique way, beautiful architecture. You know, so, and they've kind of stuck some uh, some stuff around it. And there's little murals and, you know. Yeah. Tommy's uh, doing a uh, Instagram, TikTok stuff. So if you're interested in that, give it a look. But then, yeah, again, so you'll see con stark contrasts. You walk down and just, you'll see it creeping into the distance. This yellow building here. Yes, yeah, so there's bullet holes there as well. We've seen quite a few of them really, and it's, it's mad. It's yeah, I think what, what, what's crazy is some of the buildings that we've seen that have got bullet holes in are actually still in use today. So for instance, they are, yeah, the yeah. that we went to, yes. the back of that church, which I've got a picture of, mm -hmm. has got bullet holes in. Oh, right, has it? Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. It's still in use today. Ah, oh, well, I didn't spot the bullet holes in the church, so that's interesting. Oh, right, okay, that's probably why I didn't spot it. But uh, yeah, well, that's time he was just saying there, so yeah, there's buildings that are still used day to day and uh, they have damage as well. But so yeah, you'll get this beautiful building here and then just up there, I mean, I've already demonstrated this on the channel, you'll get that, and then of course. You know, you've got the monument that Tammy took a, a video of yesterday. And uh, that was the step that she tripped up over at. I can see how that happened. It's, uh, huh? Yeah, just telling the, telling the guys, the guys and the gals watching the video. And uh, yeah, this is the monument. So yeah. This is where I trip. Spain, Spain, Spain. Um, and then you've got a mural here. I don't know who that is, so if you know who that is, do let us know. I'm always interested to learn more about the history and the culture of wherever we stay, but we must admit we don't know a huge deal. So, Bosnia, what do we think? Well, you've been kind to us, Bosnia. Your people, your hospitality, even down to the B&B we stayed in. It's been a... Uh, it's been quite the experience, to say the least. Um, we never thought we'd come here, to be honest, did we, Tam? No. We never thought we'd come to Bosnia. Um, but here we are, and uh, it's, been a, it's been a bit of a hidden gem, I guess, you know, it's full of surprises. As you've just seen for yourself, you walk down the street, and there's obviously, you know, the remnants of, uh, of what happened. But then there's also natural beauty and history, and, uh, the, 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 the stark contrast is 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 mind-blowing in many ways you know and uh, for me you know when you go to a city or anywhere in the world really like you know the best thing to do is to yeah of course go and look in the tourist areas you know go and see what it's all about go and see what the hype is see if it lives up to the hype which often doesn't unfortunately but go and see what the hype is and then of course break off into the beaten trail go and have a look see what the people live you know see what they do on their day-to-day -day lives um, and you know learn about the, the history of the place you're staying at because uh, you know that's just as important as anything else so in terms of today we're uh, going to be jumping on a Flix bus again uh, we're returning back to where we started so we're going to split uh, we're actually staying in the exact same apartment so no apartment tour in the next video um, if you want to see that that's in our first video in Croatia where we went to split and we did a uh, bit of exploration around there and um, yeah, we're going to jump on a Flix bus, head back to Split, and we're going to get there for about 9 p.m. So we've got a couple of hours here in uh, in Bosnia, um, and we're just going to spend the last few hours. I'm not going to vlog. We're just going to soak in the rest of the atmosphere, try some of the local food before we leave, and uh, maybe try and meet a few people, get speaking to some of the locals, and uh, yeah, just kind of you know. A bit like that. Um yeah yeah I spoke about that yesterday the bloke we met in the cafe very nice guy um, yeah, and just soak in the atmosphere really of, uh, of Bosnia um, and then yeah off to Croatia again and then uh, we're off home back to back to sunny old England well 
it'll probably be the same as this to be honest in terms of the weather colder. <laughs> probably a bit colder yeah but um yeah we hope you've enjoyed the uh the little tour of the apartment and the uh the area we was just going to do the actual neighborhood we're staying in but we thought well that's unfair you know what i mean we don't want to paint bosnia in a bad light you know we want to paint it in a truthful uh you know light which shows both sides of the coin so there's the coin of that is the area that we were staying in which is obviously the more kind of rundown areas which uh, was you know ravaged by the war um and then there's the areas of beauty and uh you know charm and 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 history mm. and uh and not to say that the areas that have been uh, damaged aren't history because all history is history um whether it's good or bad and uh you know to for, for an analogy actually so some people may say oh uh in this video oh well, you've you've painted bosnia in a bad light you've shown loads of broken down buildings but my argument to that is well let's just say you uh watch a film or you read a book let's just say you're a fan of harry potter and uh, you read harry potter but jk rowling decides to take out all of the bad stuff that happens all of the stuff with voldemort all of the stuff where he's under the stairs takes it all out and all you've got is the triumph and the good bits the story would be very very single layered it wouldn't have any there would be no story it would just be a story of triumph and and unfortunately to have triumph you need to have a fool you know um in many in many cases you know and that that goes for every single nation on the planet every single nation has had its strife and it's bad history and then many nations have risen up from the ashes and uh come back stronger so um i think it's important to paint both sides and show both aspects of, of that story um so we hope you're not offended by what we've uh, demonstrated today um but we just didn't want to do what every other youtuber does and just show the uh, the old town and the coffees and stuff we wanted to show that as well of course to, to give Bosnia a fair crack of the you know of the of the whip basically to make it oh thank you love uh, to, to give it a fair a fair shot but at the same time we uh, wanted to um, you know show the 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 true realities and uh, and we hope we've done that so uh, thank you so much from Bosnia um, we've really loved it here don't please want to go home. we don't want to go home yeah we'd love to stay here longer uh, we probably will return one day maybe to Sarajevo um, and uh yeah we definitely implore you to come and check it out uh, and uh, come and see it for yourself uh, because these videos really don't do it justice um you can watch them and hopefully you yeah, can live vicariously yeah. through them but you need to see it with your own eyes see it with your own eyes uh it, it does you know it does really tell a story but anyway we hope you have a great day from rainy bosnia um we hope wherever you are you're enjoying life and uh living it to the fullest and you know yeah we really appreciate you watching our channel and uh every interaction and every every you know every every person that follows us we really appreciate you so thank you and uh we hope you have a great day and we'll see you in the next video take care people